In Uganda, the most common method of infusing a drip on patients is by use of a cannula, usually connected to one's veins. The nurses or doctors control the rate of the drip and have to continue monitoring to avoid any clinical challenges. However, a 10-man team from the Uganda Industrial Research Institute has come up with a new way of controlling the amount of water that drips into the bloodstream of a person. The electronically controlled gravity feed infusion set was designed in the outer casing fabricated from here. The head of the team, Philip Angaju Makobore, explained what prompted her team to come up with such kind of innovation. Engineers at the instrumentation division here at Uganda Industrial Research Institute conducted a feasibility study. We wanted to assess what were some of the high um, priority clinical needs in the hospital. And we were looking at pediatric care. So we started at the acute care, children's acute care ward at Mulago Hospital. And we noticed that there was an overall dearth in terms of affordable and appropriate diagnostic and therapeutic equipment. But the challenge that stood out the most for us was the fact that there were very limited infusion pumps. The machine, which has taken the engineers and technicians five years to develop, has a drip sensor installed on the rollable stand. The drip chamber is clamped onto the drop sensor. So the drop sensor, um, it, it has, it's housed with optical sensors that are able to detect a drop. So there's an optical beam between it. So if there's any interference, that would detect a drop. So we've refined um, that particular module to prevent interference, especially with uh, light, um, which is in the room, so that we're able to get an accurate drop drop rate of plus or minus 1%. The ECGF is powered by a 12 volts battery. The power supply unit is made by Ronald Cheyune. We also have a monitoring module that helps us to determine the battery levels. With the battery management module, you can support a therapy for over eight hours. The ECGF is given instructions or commands using a keyboard and is able to act accordingly. I basically designed the user interface. The user interface is essentially uh, the manner in which the device communicates with the human being. Uh, it consists of a display, a keypad, LEDs. Uh, the, the clinician is able to input values to do with the size of the fluid giving set. So the fluid giving sets have different sizes. However, our device has been tested with a giving set rating of 20 drops per milliliter. So that's the one that we use. Then you'd input the volume of the bag. That would be the second step, which is usually 500 milliliter bags. Those are the most common ones. Then after that, you'd have the volume that you want to infuse into the patient. The time amount of water or medicine in the saline to be infused is all done using commands. Although the drips seem to be very fast, they are controlled by the actuator and the back pressure in the blood. The actuator um, is the one that constricts the tube based on feedback from the drop sensor of what the drop rate is in real time. And it's helpful to know that this drop rate deviates throughout the infusion therapy. So as the bag is emptying, there's hydrostatic pressure which constantly varies the flow rate. And that's why the drop rate needs to be sensed in real time so that the constriction is adjusted in accordance with the actual drop rate for that particular timestamp. In order to know what happens when there is an air bubble or less amount of prescribed saline, Inidi Kansimi calibrated the unit. More often some patients fold their arms, affecting the flow of the saline into the blood. And when it is less saline going in, the machine warns. When there is an air bubble, the machine equally warns. An air bubble into the bloodstream can cause a heart attack. So once the therapy has started, the nurse can leave the patient and attend to other duties. In the event of or possibly blockage in the cannula, it may activate an under-infusion or slow-rate alarm. And this would pause, essentially pause the therapy 
and that alarm would notify the nurse that she has to come and address what is causing the blockage and then she can resume the therapy from when it has started. Clinical trials were made in Chirudu Hospital, Fort Porto in Barra between December 2018 and February 2019. However, having the gadget tested came with hurdles. The biggest challenge we faced was getting ethical approval to test in the hospitals. This was because investigative devices are not common in clinical, in clinical trials here in Uganda, especially for a device that's developed within the country. The team has made about six of the ECGF machines and each one costs about $350 as compared to $1,000 for the imported machines that do almost the same thing. And uh, the group is entirely stuck at the moment because they lack funds. And if government could pick interest in this, you'd have more of these machines to reduce the errors in infusion therapy in many government hospitals. Over to the authorities in charge. Sudil Biarhanga. NTV Innovation Nation.